各位上师、教授师、法师同们、善信大德，以及网络直播线上的各级弘法人员及同们，大家午安，大家好，欢迎大家再次来参加苏莫传世间读书会。今天我们为大家邀请到纽约金刚雷藏寺的常住上师、莲者上师，来与大家分享师尊的文集第一百六十三册。度过生死的大海，英文版。让我们以热烈的掌声欢迎莲者上师。现在我们先请真佛波耶藏基金会的代表献上供养，以表诚挚的谢意。接下来，我们一起来聆听莲者上师的导读。阿弥陀佛。Before we begin, let us pay respect, pay homage to our His Holiness, Grand Master, Living Buddha, Shenyin Lu. Pay respect and homage to all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Dharma protectors, past, present, and future in ten directions. Pay homage to lineage masters of the True Buddha School, and then may the Guru bless me to share with you the book number 163, Crossing the Ocean of Life and Death, the most important event of our lives. Fellow masters, reverends. Dhamma practitioners, everybody, good afternoon. Amitabha. It's an honor and privilege to be here and sharing the book with you. I'm still learning as well、uh, all those teachings by Grand Master, and I want to choose this book because I believe it is the most important book. However, there are many books that Grand Master. They are all important. It depending, it depending what you want in life. We all have problems in our lives, and we all have solutions to the problems. However, the death is something we we dare not to talk about, because I know it's a Chinese superstition. You don't talk about death in Chinese New Year. You don't talk about death at any times in general. So, in our Buddhism, the teaching of death is a very important lesson in our lives. And I remember when I was a child, and back in 1968, the first death I ever saw was my grandfather's funeral in Hong Kong. At that time, I was only nine years old. I had no idea what it is all about, but I saw people crying. Desperation, upset, and at the time I was playing around in the funeral home, jumping around as if there's a party going on. But at that time I was gold, and they said, "Settle down, and you sit still." So therefore, my impression of death was just very morbid. After that, I want to use this book to share with you today. Before I begin, I want to share with you. The type of death, the fears that we all face in life. It is possible to break down the general fear of death in several specific type of fears. First of all, the fear of pain and suffering. Many people fear that when they meet death, they will experience excruciating pain and suffering. This fear is common in many healthy people. As well as in patients dying of cancer and some other terminal illnesses or diseases, and fear of unknown. Death remains the ultimate unknown because no one in human history has survived it. To tell us what really happens after we died. It is human nature to want to understand or make sense of the world around us, but death can never be fully understood by anyone living. However, by Grandmaster's、uh, teaching,、uh, you see later on when we go through the book, you see he will know 
how to solve this problem. And then the fear of non-existence. Many people fear the idea they will completely cease to exist after death occurs. While you may suspect that this fear is limited to atheists or others without personal spiritual or religious beliefs, the truth is that many people of faith also worry that the belief in the afterlife isn't real after all, or that they did not earn the eternal life while alive. The fear of eternal punishment. Similar to fear of a non-existence above, this belief does not apply to only to devout believers of religious or spiritual faith. Many people, regardless of their religious persuasions, and even those with no religious or spiritual beliefs at all, fear that they may be punished for what they did or did not do while they are on earth. Fear of loss control. Human nature generally seeks to control the situation we encounter, but death remains something over which we have absolutely no control. This frightens who will attempt to exert some form of control over death by behaving an extreme careful manner to avoid risk or undergoing rigorous frequent health checks, for instance. For instance. The thing is, I think the death is something we have to face, even though we may not like to see it. I remember saying, everybody likes to go to heaven or paradise, but nobody wants to die to go there. But the thing is, today, we want to share uh, Grandmaster's the holy teaching regarding death. Last night, if you study or went to uh, the Saturday evening cultivation in Seattle, Ningxing Temple, he's talked about when he was in retreat, he had this terrible headache that he suffered so much. And then he basically, he was, he didn't want to go live. And that's what the book is all about. The, the cost of this book, by writing this book, is sharing death, how to face death, how to not conquer death, but accepting it and using it to our advantage. So let's, if you have the books, uh, turn on the books. Turn, turn, turn to the pages. Uh, before I turn the pages, in the internet, the com has a different version of, may I say, the, uh, the printing. There are different chapters, but we have this book will be a different chapters. So it's because when the first chapter is preface, but according to this book, it's number one. In our internet, is no chapter one, it's preface. So chapter one is actually chapter two in this book. So just to be aware, when we go through the books, you know what it is. And another one, if you have iPad or iPhone uh, reading this book, you can go to reader mode so that eliminate all those brick that doesn't, you know, doesn't look good on the web page. So when you hit the reader mode, you will see that uh, it will be very clear the format is perfectly formatted. However, in, in the website, there's a little glitch that is not able to read it very plainly, so to speak. So if you have iPad and iPhone, you can use that to read it. Let's turn to the page. Uh, in this book, it's called page two, Guanyin's Word. Let's go through that page. You see Guanyin and talk to Grandmaster in a spiritual form. He says, I ask, do you see that now? Will, be, will people believe what I write? And then the Bodhisattva to Guanyin replied, these are not superstitions. Superstitions, everyone dies and there's no exception to this fact. Death is a realistic issue that is anything but superstitious. Yet the world does not end with death. Buddhism, Christianity, 
Hinduism, Islam, and other esoteric teaching all recognize the fact that there's a world beyond death which can be verified and that the world of spirits does indeed exist. We want you to write about it and we want you to experience it firsthand. So Grandmaster, being his living Buddha, he experienced many lives and using his experiences to share with us uh, this, this particular book. So right now we go through the Guan Yin and then the Grandmaster splitting headache. The reason for this book again is because Grandmaster had a splitting headache. He wanted to share with the world what pain and suffering is all about and avoid those suffering and by using the teaching in this book. Okay, now we're going to page, page four. Uh, excuse me, page 18 and 19 in this book, excuse me, in this book, which is ch in chapter 4 in the Boye. It talks about Grandmaster being a precious treasure. You see that, said? Those who read this book will discover that living Buddha, Lian Sheng, Shen Lu, is a treasure. You read that? You got that? The most precious supreme treasure in this Saha world, in an immense lamb universally illuminating this world, and whose light is infinite. An illuminant lamb driving away ignorance and darkness of the three lower realms. A holy sage one who possesses all Dharma's treasures, a true Buddha, a Tathagata, who has attained an excelled perfect enlightenment. So we know this. In order to write this book, you have to be above the precious treasure. So we're so fortunate to have taken refuge of the Grand Master, to have this treasure in our palm of our hands. But you have to use it. Now it's time to use it to apply to our daily lives. And we go to page chap uh, 27 on this book and in it's under chapter 6. Really, by right this point, it talks about practice diligently. You know, Palmer Sambawa, Guru Rinpoche, have said that before his passing to went to the Western Paradise, he says, honor the Guru, treasure the Dharma, and practice diligently. And then, as grandmasters have written, we have to practice diligently. In fact, today, we are here for what reason? To practice diligently, to honor the Guru, treasure this Dharma of to this afternoon, Akasagava, fire offering, and then practice diligently with grandmasters hold his teaching. So on the page 27, and it talks about the three root. What is the three roots? The root guru, which is our holiness, grandmaster, sending root. Your guru, your personal deity, or idam, Y-I-D-A-M. And then your root dharma protectors. You see, he says, I personally, excuse me, I personally feel that the three roots of Rajayana are vitally important. The Guru is the main holder of all Dharma. The personal deity is the self nature of the practitioner. And the Dharma protector is the guardian of the human world. Nowadays, Aleni, recently I just noticed there, in the two days I got here on Thursday night, and a lot of people complain that they have this spiritual attached to the body and not feeling too well by XX. Right now, it's time to practice. Using the grandmaster's teaching on your own, don't rely on grandmaster everything. Once you teach Dharma, you have to do it on your own. Practice diligently, chant as much as you can. Of course, with grandmaster's blessing, you have to do your own homework. That is, do your Dharma, Dharma protectors mantra as much as possible. 
so doesn't have to bother grandmaster so much at all the time. That's something we need as a student to do our own homework. And that's important to say that right here. All three are so vitally important that one of them cannot be missing. That's the most important Tantrayana or Vajrayana. Remember that. Okay? So I'm not going to go through the other books, but I believe the more important passages of teaching is important. So right now, let's leave that and go to chapter 13 on page 70. I'm sorry, not, this, this book is chapter 14, but in the internet, uh, the boye is chapter 13, and we go to the Mara. Uh, uh, yeah. Page 17. What if you practice so much and then you see Buddha come in? And then you, someone will ask, if Mara or Mara, it depends how you pronounce it, manifests itself as the Buddha to receive us, what happened? What do I do? Oh, you see the passage? Uh, yeah. My reply to him or her was to recite the mantra Om Guru Ren Sang Siddhi Hum three times. If the Buddha is real, his life will grow brighter. If the Buddha is in the manifestation of the Mara, he will, he will disappear. That's a very important lesson here. So very important that you need to know that. And then on page 78 with this book, again, it talks about six refuge. Is it, isn't it four refuge? Why is it six refuge? Grandmaster said on page 78 of this book, Namo Guru Bay, I take refuge in the root guru, that we all know. Namo Buddha Ye. I take refuge of the Buddha. Namo Dhammo Ye, I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma. Namo Sankhya Ye, I take refuge of Holy Sage. We repeat every day. But there's two more. That's why I talked about earlier root gurus, root, the three roots. Namo Idam, I take refuge in all the Idams and deities of affinity. You have affinity to Akasakapa, you take refuge in that. You take refuge of Guan Yin or Avalokita Savana, your personal deity. Then you take refuge on the Guan Yin. That's what the fifth is all about. And then your root Dharma protectors. Namo Dharma Palas that take refuge in the protectors of sentient beings. So right now, the Dharma protectors are very important in, human, in the human realm. That is your, basically your success, your protection at all times. It is equivalent to Judeo-Christian like guardian angels, if I can recreate that. Look after you at all times. So we need that. Not only the grandmaster's teaching, you think of them all the time, of course, but you always think about the protection. Let's say I drive the car to Oregon this afternoon, I will ask the protector to protect me with hopefully no traffic um, and also hopefully no accident. And we pray for that. The Dharma protectors protect us and we need to take refuge in them. Now go through the skip. Remember, I'm not here to read the books to you. I'm here to suggest the book to you and you read it on your own and read it carefully because you'll miss a point and you're going to be sorry. You don't want to be sorry. So let's do it very carefully at home reading this book or reading it in the internet in tbboyeh.com. The next one we talk about on page 90 of this book, which is no crying on the deathbed. We all have death either in a family or see death outside our family, we feel painful. We feel so sorrowful. We feel lost. But the grandmaster said, 
Do not cry if you can. I know it's important to show your emotions and also show the respect doing a funeral service or maybe attending a funeral service. But the most important uh, aspect of the grandma's teaching is that we do not want to do this in affecting people. That is the person who just passed on. Because at that time, you, this, this chapter is about talking to the deaf, the, the people in the deathbed. And then we look at uh, the line where there's a lotus practitioner. He talk about the, someone who's loved one in front of you who already passed on and talk to him directly, or him or her. It's a lotus practitioner. Everyone dies. You see the passage? Life always, almost end of the chapter. Life always meets the deaf one day. Crave this broken bodily form no more. There is no way you can remain on earth even you cannot bear to leave. Go now, go. Stop lingering this world. Otherwise it will drive you into endless cycle of birth and rebirth. Gaining nothing in return, or indeed, focus your mind on the triple jewels and the three roots. Dedicate your merits instantly. May all who uphold the name of Amitabha Buddha be reborn together in the pure land of his par his, uh, Western paradise. As Grandma said, always said, happy Buddha country. Repaying the fourfold generosity from above and aiding those who suffer in the three paths below. Upon seeing Buddha, the Buddha, may I be liberated from the cycle of birth and death, and may I develop the qualities of Buddhahood and thus free all who suffer. We will meet again at the Maha Trimble Double Lotus Pond in the Western Paradise of Ultimate Bliss. So, again, it says, do not cry. And the earlier part says, cry. Uh, you we want to go back there. It says, the main point I'm trying to say is always to cry, but we should not veil and mourn in distress. We should always control, concentrate. That's why we have practice. Again, when I ask grandmasters taught us to practice every day, honestly speaking, the practice itself is how to get out of here, how to end your life. If you remember, in the beginning of practice, we have evocation mantra, purification mantra, until completion mantra. Everything in between, reading sutra, Avarakete Savala sutra, um, two Buddha sutra, guru yoga, four preliminaries, they ask us to focus to be merged with the Buddha. Every day we practice death, if you think about it. While we put, we are joining the fire puja today. We visualize to be with deity and the fire together. What is it really like? It's cremation. Every time we practice fire offering, we practice cremation. You think about it. So do not cry. Do not feel upset. Oh my God, I feel coming home I'm dead. No. One day you will use it. Not be afraid. That's most important. The fear I mentioned earlier is a counter fear. No more fearful. No more fear. Anything. Phobia is fear in the technical Latin term. If you fear of funeral home, fear of cemeteries, it's necrophobia. Necro, N-E-C-R-O. If you fear of death itself, it's tenonophobia. I guess you know all that. But one more thing. When we die, after we cremate it, do you decide where you want to bury it? 
not to advertise anything. We have Rainbow Temple in the back <laughs> with columbarium. You know columbarium? It's what we're building in the back. And the technical term is called columbarium. We're building it. And I'm um, the first one, I believe, I've, I've, I think, already paid my share, pay my earned, <laughs> pay my spot. I already first register to just share with you. That's something I, I did. Everybody has to be prepared every day. Death doesn't come in in certain time. It comes in any time, any day, anywhere. So we should all know that. Mindfulness of impermanence. That's something we all have to, to think about. I'm going back to the next chapter uh, right here. It's uh, chapter. I'm sorry, chapter 19 now in the TB boy year is 18. On this page, it's 95 to 98. Talk about it. Do not enter those rebirths. It's very important now. Everybody, please listen up. A ghost finding another ghost. That's the main topic. I know there's a whole chapter, but I want to show you. They were trying to frighten you. Actually, these ghosts are not something outside somewhere else. It's actually our inner demon. What we have done in this life, it turns to a ghost who scare you. Remember, we have believed in law of karma, cause and effect. The more you create bad karma, the more you have guilt feeling. Those guilt feelings are the ones that are karma inside your registration, your memories. We call them in the technical terms in the modern days, your hard disk is inside of you. So when we pass on, when we die, those things come back, appearing in the different forms of ghosts. And you think about it, and the grandmaster's at books, it's right there in page. You must never, uh, sorry, sorry, say, I'm sorry, it's 94 on this page. You must never be fearful when you're in the realm of the bottle spirit, even if horrifying, enormous, and ferocious ghosts appear before of you. You must recognize the following. It's very important. It's on early part of the. Those ferocious growths are deliberately trying to frighten you. Number two, they are merely a reflection of your own consciousness. That's what I mentioned earlier. Your guilt feeling, your own conscience, consciousness. Ghosts are just an illusion. It's a mirror of your joy and anger, your karma, and of course, your past sins. This is a test of a strength of meditative stability. Your meditative stability is also in your dreams. We all dream. If you dream, you can control your dreams, then you're medical, meditatively stable. But let's say you cannot control your dreams, you're not in a meditative stable. stable. So we need to do that. Grandmasters has said many times, our dreams are a little death. So by controlling, or controlling your dreams, you're controlling your death. Eventually, when we really have to go, we're in control. It is a set of strength and meditative stability. Six, you should ignore the ferocious ghosts even they are collectively create a sound of thousand thunder claps. You should be unafraid and fearless of ghosts. You should remind yourself that you are already dead and no ghost could possibly hurt you because they are just illusions. Going very quickly, besides the phenomenon of one ghost finding another ghost, whatever you are most afraid of may be reflected and projected through your state of consciousness. And remember, these frightening images are nothing more than a reflection of your own mind. At this point, everything hinges on meditative strength and wisdom of the deceased. 
And this with depending uh, fellow Dharma practitioners, that's what we said you have to practice every day. And then the, the page 99 of this book, going forward, is because on the beginning of chapter, the Vajrayana teachings are distinguished the form aggregate. You should avoid all those six kinds of light that we be reincarnation. Remember, like everybody, we do not want to reincarnate. We want to be both in, reborn in a happy paradise, the Western paradise. So if you see any light or very faint white light that's in heaven. We don't want to go there. Even though we might go there, depending on the karma, but we don't want to go there. We want to go to a strong by light like the sunlight today. The light of a human realm is a dim yellow light. The light of an asura is dim green light. A light of a hell which is a smoky, hazy, very grave light. The light of the hungry girls is a dim red light. The light of the animal realm is a dim blue light. So we don't want to go there. We want to go to five strong, colorful. That's why Tibetan, all the tankas and all the decorations of five Buddhas light, which is very white, yellow, which is gold, green, blue, and red. Those are the things we need to focus on, those strong, blue light, strong lights. Um, Going to page 109, which is the GM vows to save us. Very important. Grandmaster, our holiness, Grandmaster, has promised us that when we chant Om Guru Ren Sang City Home, your guru and the personal deity are bound by the vows to save us. So the last sentence of that is important. I want to point that out. The last sentence, all the way down to the bottom. There you go, right there. So that's it. I want to mention that. That's important. His vow. 21, uh, page 113 and 15, suitable places of body spirits. Let's say when we die, we want to go somewhere. There are three places important. That's very stressful, very important the place where the root guru resides, the temples and monasteries. You come here every Sunday, good, good for us. We're here, we come here. Chapters and places where group cultivation take place, wherever you're from. After we finish here, go back, go back to the temple and chapters, local chapters, and we call group cultivation is important. And stupas and pagodas, okay, you have, uh, Wishing is a Vajaya stupa at home, or you have the small, whatever, you have to go there. That's important. Let's say the judgment day. Huh? The four, uh, go back to 121, sorry. For refuge mantra, the judgment day comes in. That's why fourth preliminary is very important. Even though we just chant, Namo Guru Be, Namo Buddhaye, Namo Tamoye, Namo Sangjaye, you will not fall in the three lower paths below. And then I'm going to go to all the way to the end, uh, chapter uh, 31 to 34, and the internet will be 30 to 33, is caring for dying. Let's say, um, unfortunately, you have somebody, your friend or family pass on, what can you do for them? Of course, the first thing you do is fax or email or do whatever you can to Grandmaster here in Seattle. Or, in, or maybe when he was in, in Taiwan, to go to Faxi to Taiwan. And then you can ask the local chapters or the masters and monks and nuns to do the 49 days of bottle chanting deliverance. But most important you can do, let's say they are not Buddhists, what do you do? Chant rebirth mantra. That, that's the least you can do. That's what Grandmaster taught us. Oh, you know what we birth mantra, right? Yeah, good. So I want to 
uh, finishing up the whole book. And remember, very important for you to read this book, understanding thoroughly what you need to be, to, to be done. Before I end, I want to make a special acknowledgement for thanks again, thanks to Grandmasters, the blessing for me to share with you this book, this very important book. Every book is important, but I believe personally that this book is important. It's applicable to our daily lives, especially to each and every one of us. Thanks to Grandmaster, pay respect, pay homage to my personal root deities, good guru, Dharma protectors, and today's uh, lineage masters. And again, I want to show appreciation of Bingo Temple for letting me uh, share with you the two Buddha translation team. I know it's very important to them to translate the books. And by the way, in September 16, they have two books is available for signing in the Rainbow Temple. If you can show that, yeah, thank you very much for showing in the interview. And um, thank you for um, everything, just basically. Um, so may Buddha bless you and with good fortune, good luck, and and then uh, T-B-B-O-Y-E-H, that O-R-G, I'm sorry, I uh, made a mistake. Uh, it should be O-R-G, not com, okay? So now that if you need anybody who would like to translate the books or who is able and willing to do so, volunteer work, please contact the above email, tbtds.audico at gmail.com. We appreciate all the help we can get in propagating the Dharma teaching by His Holiness Grandmaster Sen Yin Lu. And also, we appreciate of, in fact, we do have another website I want to share too, it's tbsn.org. This website is the latest news and information um, that you need to know. Anything happening, the Grandmaster, let's say the Rainbow Temple has a, a website too, but it's, the whole world can use that. So again, I want to share with you, and thank you for the, your audience. Thank you for coming. Thank you for very much. May Buddha bless you. Thank you, Amitabha. Thank you very much, Lianzhe Sangsi, for sharing the story of the Shizun's book, The Wonderful Sea of the Great Sea, in the English version of the Book 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 of the Book. Do you understand? Do you understand? Lianzhe Sangsi, actually, this book is really important. 那我们真的很感谢连泽上师，那我们啊也以热烈的掌声感谢大家的护持。下个星期天八月二十七日，同样的时间，下午一点半到两点十分，我们将邀请西雅图雷藏寺的莲旺上师来与大家分享师尊的文集，啊，师尊的开示录。九品莲华生，欢迎大家踊跃护持参加，谢谢大家，阿弥陀佛，下周见。